I want you to know that we are sharing this because we care about you. It has given me that chance to look good <laughs> and feel good. This product, you put it under your tongue, it goes into your blood where it's ready to go and make a difference. It's a silicone in a gel base, so it's just going to really soft. You're not going to have so it. It's cool. not transferable. Totally I wish yeah. I had this on my wedding day. I, oh, all I know. Right? All over the place. With the buying power of one point three billion people with the Today, democracy can ebb away in communities whose citizens allow power to become concentrated in the hands of bosses. What I say goes, see? I'm the law around here. <laughs> To find things to do with your time and find ways to socialize that aren't about consuming takes some degree of creativity. The way you get their attention is by jostling the category. From the role of entertainer, from the role of consumer to something where it was much more fluid, explosive, undefined. And so it's basically people who maybe discover some kind of flaw in the system and come up with an entertaining way to, um, to share it with other people. To intervene on the street and to bring messages to their work that might not find a place in a gallery setting, perhaps. So, so all power to the imagination. If they're not paying you, all power to the imagination. A good prank is mischievous, satirical, and even surreal. Unlike a practical joke, a well-executed prank makes us laugh, question, think, and take notice. Cunning pranks are the tradition of Jonathan Swift, P.T. Barnum, Ken Kesey, Sasha Baron Cohen. The work produced by John Hargrave, Alan Abel, and Charlie Todd is clever and provocative. It raises ideas about media credibility and public gullibility. Their activities require them to be multimedia artists and performers, as well as planners and organizers. My name is John Hargrave.